Okay, let's take a look at an example for uh, angular momentum conservation. A disk with moment of inertia I1 rotates about a frictionless vertical axle with angular speed omega initial. A second disk, this one having moment of inertia I2 and initially not rotating, initially not rotating, drops onto the first disk because of friction between the surfaces the two eventually reach the same angular speed omega final. Calculate omega final. Calculate the ratio of the initial to the final rotation kinetic energy. Okay, so I see that uh, this one is uh, omega 2 initial is going to be zero <clears throat> and I have omega one initial is omega initial so let's make this one also nicer omega two initial is zero and finally they are moving together omega one final and omega two final is equal to omega final so if i write down the angular momentum of the first disc initially l1 initial is i1 omega initial and l2 initial is zero if i write the final angular momentum l final is going to be i1 omega 1 final plus i2 omega 2 final so this will be i1 plus i2 omega final so why are these adding up uh, algebraically because the sense of rotation for these two will be the same so the angular momentum uh, vectors will be in this direction so it will be in the uh, z direction let's say this will be the total angular momentum vector in this direction <clears throat> and also the initial angular momentum vector is going to be in this direction um, how do I know this? By using the right hand rule, I curl my fingers in the direction of rotation of the disc and my thumb points in the direction of angular momentum. Okay, so I have made some observations about the angular momentum uh, of the system. So in order to answer part A of the question, uh, let me think about the physics of the problem. Uh, if I look at the net external torque on this system, acting on this system, uh, there is no friction with the vertical axle uh, and there is no other external force that is being applied uh, in, the, in the plane of the rotation. So the net external torque is zero. Therefore, dL dt is zero. The change in angular momentum, total angular momentum, should be zero. Angular momentum must be conserved. And I just looked at the initial angular momentum. Initial angular momentum was I1 times omega initial uh, because omega 2 initial is 0 and final angular momentum is I1 plus I2 omega final so these two should be the same therefore L initial is equal to L final I1 omega initial is equal to I1 plus I2 omega final so I will get omega final is equal to I1 divided by I1 plus I2 
omega initial. So this will be my answer for the final angular speed of the combined disks. And let's look at part B. Now I want to know the ratio of the final to the initial rotational energy. Okay, so what is the initial uh, rotational kinetic energy? It's going to be equal to 1 over 2 I1 omega initial squared. And the final rotational kinetic energy will be equal to 1 over 2 I1 plus I2 omega final squared. <clears throat> so I want to know the ratio. So K final divided by K initial will be I1 plus I2 omega final squared divided by I1 omega initial squared. Uh, Alright, so what I have obtained here, K final divided by K initial is the ratio I1 plus I2 divided by I1, omega final divided by omega initial squared. So what is omega final divided by omega initial squared? I1 plus I2 divided by I1 multiplied with omega final uh, divided by omega initial uh, from this would be uh, I1 divided by I1 plus I2. So this is I1 divided by I1 plus I2 squared. So uh, this will go away with this one and one of these I1 plus I2s will disappear here. So my answer for the ratio of final to initial uh, rotational energies will be I1 